two, one. Crouch, touch, set. <coughs> when the people of New Zealand hosted the 2011 15s World Cup, they came behind that event as much as any population ever has. Now that was partly because the country of New Zealand knew that they probably weren't going to be hosting any more World Cups after this. Their venues are just too small, they don't have enough hotel rooms, all those little infrastructure uh, aspects come into play. But that's why the people of New Zealand were determined to make sure that this was going to be the kind of event where they supported every aspect of it. There were going to be no empty stadiums on their watch, there were going to be no communities that weren't behind the event 100%. It was a matter of national pride, not only for the organizers and the administrators, it was a matter of national pride for the people. Now flash forward two years to Moscow and the Sevens World Cup that just concluded. Held at Lizhniki Stadium Complex, we didn't really see that sort of thing, partly because Moscow is just one massive multicultural city, but it was also because of the venue. Lizhniki Stadium holds 90,000 fans, and we know there wasn't anything near 90,000 fans at the stadium. And in fact, there could have been 20,000, there could have been 15, there could have been 30,000. We wouldn't know. If you watched the event on television or on webcast, what did you see in the background? You saw the nightmare for any kind of sports promoter. Masses and masses of empty seats. And why did that happen? Well, first of all, Moscow, not necessarily a destination city. And second of all, the government of Russia were fully behind the event. They put a lot of money into it. They put a lot of promotion into it. But promotion in getting the event to Russia, not promotion in getting fans there, and certainly not promotion in getting more sponsorship. So it was an expenditure, a vanity expenditure, for the government of Russia. But what ended up happening is we didn't get an event that was really backed up the amazing performances we saw by the New Zealand national team on both the men's and women's side, and by Canada, and by several other great countries that played so well. What does that mean for the United States? Well, USA Rugby is going to be putting in a bid for the Sevens World Cup in 2018. The timing has been changed. We'll be waiting five years because they want two years between the 2016 Olympics and then the World Cup and then the 2020 Olympics. That gives a little bit more time for USA to really get it together and frankly for the IRB to really get it together. This tournament cannot be something where you just hold a bunch of games on a field somewhere or in a massive stadium somewhere in some place where a bunch of people in suits can feel good wandering around saying here we are we're at the Sevens World Cup. What we need is the right venue where the secondary field is still a stadium and not just a field where people are just standing around as we saw in Russia. We want the main stadium to be large, but not so large that 20,000 people seem like they're really 20 because their cheers just echo around the empty seats. And what we need to see is backing from the community. Now, if you're not a fan of USA Rugby, or if you get upset because they pick the venue to be, say, in Denver when you wanted it to be in Dallas, or they picked it to be in San Francisco when you wanted it to be in New York, you still need to get behind this. If United States get the bid for the 2018 Sevens World Cup, we as a rugby community need to get behind it because we have to have national pride, not only in our sport, but in our country to make sure that it looks good and make sure that we don't repeat the mistakes in Moscow. And right.